Yeah, it looks like we've got a street preacher I've never seen before. He's got a little tiny uh, set of steps he stood on. Yeah. I've never seen him for a middle-aged man. And he's just there in the middle of the thoroughfare. And I suppose he's preaching God to everyone. What's this? Help yourself. Thank Jesus. Oh, are they, are they free? Yeah, sure. Have any sort of faith yourself? Um, what's this? A brief look at the Christian mess. Oh yeah, I, I was brought up Christian. Yeah. So I don't, I don't, I don't really believe in it anymore. So. Oh yeah, well that's a shame, isn't it? Really? Yeah. What's what you asked then? Uh, no, I just uh, rationed it all out that it was probably all made up. <laughs> Simple as that. Yeah. And uh, none of my prayers really answered. And uh, look at the Bible, and some of it's quite horrific, especially the Old Testament. So, if God is a God of judge as well as a God of love. Wickedness has to be judged. Yeah. That applies to you and I. We've all got, we're not wholly perfect, are we? Do you think you're wicked? In my old nature, I'm disobedient to God. Yeah. In my nature, I'm disobedient. I want to do my own thing, basically rebellious. Yeah. I have to come to terms with that at some point in my life. And, Were you uh, hurting other people, like that sort of thing? Uh, well, I suppose I might have been what you call a respectable sinner. Yeah. I suppose uh, I lived a fairly. Um, I didn't uh, treat my parents very well, but uh, mm. um, didn't do anything obviously wrong. But ignoring God, you see, what I did for 30 years of my life, I ignored God. Yeah. And that's the worst thing you can do because the result of doing that. You're living your own, you're doing your own thing, you're living your own life instead of living the life that God wants you to live. How do you know though? Because we can't see God or hear Him and there's so many religions around, it's hard to know. Are any of them real? Are they all false? How do you know? But the Christian the Christian faith is, is a relationship with God. That's what I find out when I was 30. If you actually um, admit that you do things wrong before God, yeah. you, break, you break the Ten Commandments or you break God's moral law, yeah. just obey Him something. If you're actually willing to turn away from that lifestyle and you're willing to actually live the way God wants you to live, mm. and if you put your faith in Jesus, you see Jesus, the important thing is that Jesus, you may remember that Jesus died on the cross to take your sin and my sin mm. on Himself. Mm. That's the crucial thing. Now that's, and, and the, the crucial thing is that he, he did die on the cross, but that wasn't the end of Jesus. He rose from the dead. Mm. So that is a, the evidence for that is very strong. You might say, oh, the Bible made it up. So all, all sin was washed away? Only for, for, for me as an individual. Yeah. I mean, yes, if you put your life into Jesus, all, all, the, all your sin is washed away, yes. All right. So, so we, we can sin now, it's okay. I know, because you, don't, you find that when you're truly born again, God puts his spirit into you, yeah. and you don't want to sin any longer. Oh. So your whole attitude is changed. You see, so other people often say that, oh, well, now you are forgiven, you can do what you like. But what actually happens, you no longer want to do the things that you might have wanted to do before. So mm. you want to please God, because, you know, if Jesus went through that horrific death on the cross, for me personally, or for you personally, uh, you know, I owe him a great deal. Yeah. So I, I want to live a life that's pleasing to him, pleasing to God. Yeah. Not just doing my own thing. But he, he was put to death on the cross because he was annoying the Pharisees and then they took him to the Romans and they just crucified him because well, he was a, you know, yeah. a bit of a, a reactionary or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, and, well that's um, a human way of looking at it. God's purpose of that, that is all part of God's plan to die for the sins of the world. Yeah. Jesus took the wrath of God on the cross when he, when he died. He, he was without sin, so we, we all, death is the, um, sin deserves death. So we, we all deserve yeah. and we all, we all get death because we're all sinners. But Jesus didn't deserve death, he was without sin. And therefore when he died on the cross, he was taking mm. the penalty or the punishment for your yeah. sin and my sin and everybody else who's willing to acknowledge oh. him. Well, so if somebody just, for instance, is, um, they do some bad things like, perhaps when they're a kid, they steal a couple of things from a shop and perhaps when they're a bit older, they cheat on their girlfriend or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, but don't particularly believe in God because they they look for evidence and they can't find it. Um, does that mean that without being born again, they, as you said, that they, they will get, they will die? Um, does that mean hellfire die or just it's gone one, forever? It's one thing to die and then comes the judgment. Yeah. And the judgment is you'll either be received by God and going and be received into God's kingdom, mm. or or God will say. Um, 
um, not away from me. I never knew you. you know, in other words, if you never had any life uh, with God all through mm. your life, God, uh, God will say, I never knew you. So yeah. then depart from me. So that's eternal separation from God. So that's what... Uh, that's actually what hell is. Actually, once you've actually met with God in the judgment, then you realise what, you, what you've missed. Mm. If he says, depart from me, I never knew you, and mm. he cast you out of his presence. So hell is, isn't the, this furnace that the Bible talks about. It's just some area where there's no God. So an empty place. Well, it's, 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 it's uh, some sort of spiritual place. I yeah. don't know any more. Than that, yeah. I mean, you either go into God's presence, or, he, or when God says, "Depart from me," you, you know, you go out of His presence, whatever that means. Yeah. The same as we, you know, before we come to Christ, we're really living outside God's presence now. Mm. If you haven't given your life to Jesus, yeah. you're really living outside God's presence now. You're okay. living your own, doing your own thing, probably, and we all do. I did it for 30 years. Mm. But the Bible does say, because I remember as a kid yeah. um, being scared by certain lines like. The lake of fire, hell is a furnace, the fire will not be quenched. Yeah. Well, that, that sounds pretty sort of overkill for a few little sins, you know. Or people just acting like people, really. Well, it's, um, it's the holiness of God. We don't, it's hard for us to realize uh, how holy God is and to be in his presence yeah. is a holy thing. So, uh, you know, that would be a very wonderful thing for, for those who get into his presence. So the opposite is it, it's extremely bad. It's a tormenting situation to realise you've missed what life is all about. So, uh, you know, the lake of fire and various things like that uh, are just ways of expressing the extreme pain, the extreme torment of being separated from... Oh, so it's not actual flames or anything? Well, <laughs> uh, it is more, quite possibly worse than actual flames, you know, but they're, oh, right. these are just... They're, they're, uh, because there are different pictures, like it's, you, you're cast into the outer darkness. So on the one hand, that's a pretty horrific thing to be in total darkness. And on the one hand, and another thing it might say is it's, uh, you know, you know the, it might be the flames of hell. So yeah. the different pictures. Of, the, the common thing is there is a tormenting situation, however it's described in the Bible. Yeah. It's a tormenting situation, situation to be cast out of God's presence. Okay. So, the, but this is a, this is a, a holy thing, as you say. What would he decide? Well, his judgment is is the most righteous thing that can that can yes. be done. But his judge his judgment is based on faith. That's where Christianity is different from, say, Islam. Islam, yeah. you're judged on your good deeds versus your bad deeds. Mm. But God's standard is 100. percent You've got to be as righteous as Christ, because Jesus was without sin. Mm. So to be accepted into God's presence, He wants people who are as righteous as Christ, and we just yeah. can't be in our own strength. It's impossible. We've all done things wrong, yeah. so we can't be. So we have to receive that righteousness from God. And yes. Once we actually put our life into Jesus' hands, yeah. uh, God then sees us as righteous from then onwards, and then we spend the rest of our life trying to live up to uh, yeah. what God has actually made us righteous, and then and not until we actually come into God's presence will that be complete, and okay. we will be yeah. righteous, and then we will be like Christ. It says we will be like Christ. But didn't God make us that way, that we have these desires, we have, for instance, sexual urges, we have this need in us to, you know, to better ourselves and to have a good time and all that. That's just the way we are. You could say that God made us faulty and then blames us for it. It's not, it, you can't actually lay down what you should or shouldn't do, but it's, it's that basic rebellion that you've got to get over. You've got to get wanting to live your own life and do your own thing and say, you know, I'm not, I'm not interested in God. You know, God, God, I don't want to live God's standards. It, 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 might, it might not be the way I want to live. But actually, God's way of living is actually better than your own way of living. Mm. But no, God, God's given us freedom to choose. He's given us freedom to... Wait, the basic choice is, am I going to live... Am I going to put my life into God's hands and live according to Him? And then you get once you get this relationship with God, yeah. then then day by day you know what to do with your life. Yeah. You see? So if you want to have a good time, if God's happy with you having a good yeah. time, um, it's not right to have a sexual relationship outside marriage. Nothing wrong with sex, but that's meant to be in marriage. That's God's plan for yeah. our sexual outlet. So that's do you think God should have designed us that way, where from age whatever 15 or onwards you have this? sexual urge which drives you crazy <laughs> well i think that doesn't uh, seem if, very fair if you if you if you come to christ you will have the power the power of christ is greater than the power of sin 
So whatever temptation, if you once you become a Christian, you put your life into His hand. Once you've, um, you then receive the power of Christ in your life, and that is, then there's no sin that is greater than the power of Christ. You just have to be willing to live Christ's way, and then God will yeah. uh, protect you, keep okay. you away from temptation. So ideally, you should become a Christian by puberty, at least, really. So then you can keep those feelings down until marriage. Well, it doesn't matter what t what age you come, you're going to have sins behind you, you know. I mean, my wife was 45, I, I married late in life, so my, my wife was about 45 when she became a Christian. She had a horrific life, she had all sorts of wrong relationships, she broke up marriages, so you've got, you've got you know, whereas I was maybe, what you, like I said, a respectable sinner, I didn't have that sort of problem, but yeah. I'm still separated from God. So you, not most of us, we've all got some sort of history of sin behind us, even yeah. at 15 because your, your nature is sinful from the start. People don't like the idea of babies having a sinful nature. Um, but, but all right from birth, we are basically selfish. Yeah, would you say that from birth people are basically evil, even, even infants? <coughs> evil is a difficult word. It's better to say people are sinful. Really. We, we all, we're selfish, we want to do our own thing. Yeah. Um, I mean, Jesus did say we are all evil. Do you think a baby crying for milk in the middle of the night is is being selfish and sinful? <laughs> oh, I don't think you would say that. I used to think that, and I've brought up children myself, so <laughs> yeah. I guess that, that was an obvious example of people, that babies being sinful. But uh, I think that is that is a natural that's a natural thing, so you can't yeah. say that's sinful. But obviously, sometimes. Um, <laughs> Sometimes a baby will show for attention and all sorts of things. So obviously, it's more difficult to, yeah. to judge whether it's sinful or whether it's just part of growing up. But uh, sexual desire is also a natural thing, then, don't you think? Yes, well, it's, it's meant to be within marriage, so there is a place for that. Yeah. So, obviously, in our society, we tend to get married late, don't we? I mean, mm. Twenty, you know, not before twenty. So, you, so Christians have a, a struggle all through their teens mm. to try and, and to, to say celibate, to stay celibate. Yeah. But, but I know, you know Christians who don't have that. Well, I, yeah. I became a Christian at 30, and God protected me, so I didn't have any sexual problems before I was God 30. God protected you? Well, I didn't have any sexual problems before I was 30, so I didn't oh. have those sort of things to confess. Or oh, you're lucky then. Right. <laughs> well, yeah, unusual, maybe unusual, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, that's, but you have other things, you see. I, wasn't, I was living totally separate from God. Mm. Um, I was, but the different, I was searching for the truth. I didn't realise at the time. Yeah. I was always trying to find out what is life all about, what is it? And I was interested in, in astronomy and that sort of thing. So I thought the real, the most important things for life were, were finding out how the universe came about, that sort of thing. So I was on that sort of quest. That sounds like was, a good idea. <laughs> well, yeah, but the real quest is you, you can seek, seek, seeking God is the real quest of life. Mm. God in his graciousness, he, um, I live in St Albans, I don't know if you know St Albans. I do know St Albans, yeah. There's a cathedral there. Yeah, I've been there, massive thing, isn't it? Yeah, and when I was 30 I got locked in there overnight. Spooky. So that's how God, that's how God got through to me. So I went in there late at night, and um, when they unlocked the place in the morning... You were Christian. Well, I, I, I believe, only believe two things at that stage, that there was a God, because God had spoken to me during that time oh, I was okay. there, and that I was forgiven. The whole yeah. weight of guilt, which I hardly knew was there, had been lifted off. So I only knew that there was a God, and that I was forgiven. And it took me 15 years or so to really, really understand that I could only be forgiven because what Jesus did on the cross. Jesus took okay. the penalty for my sin, and I don't have to carry it myself, and he lifted off that sin and guilt. So, yeah. obviously in those 15 years I went to a lot of different churches, read the Bible. Mm. But it took quite a long time for me to really be sure. And of course, I, I thought Jesus was a man, so you have to struggle through, work your way through, that you know, is Jesus more than a man? Or, yeah. <laughs> and those sort of things. Exactly. So before you get it all together. But you, once, you've, once you've received God's forgiveness, you're, on, you're starting on the right path. And if you put your life into Jesus' hands, which I did at that time. So it's really interesting, you were locked in St. Albans Cathedral yeah. and came out a Christian. Well, yeah. Maybe it was just the, the environment you were in there for so many hours on your own, it sort of influenced you. Well, I think I would say that God got me on my own, see. Mm. Normally life is too busy, I was in 
interested in sport and goodness knows what. So to actually get me on my own, and actually I was, uh, my father died, I was 30 then, my father died when I was 21. Yeah. And um, I, th I, <coughs> I, I, I was living in digs and um, I, I really thought I was going to be ill. Oh. And so I went out for a walk, and, and during this walk, I realised I was heading for the Abbey. So I went in there late at night, it was open, yeah. and then just after I got in there, they shut the doors, and I was locked inside. <coughs> but I why did was, you go in though? I just felt a need for God. There's just you can't really explain that. Uh, well, yeah. it sounds like you decided yourself to be a Christian, really. <laughs> <coughs> well, I mean, it's, I mean, it's all the circumstances. Well, you do decide yourself, but yeah. God arranges the circumstances. You give us many opportunities to turn to Him, and that was my opportunity. I might have had earlier opportunities, um, but I, I missed them or whatever. But it is quite easy for somebody who's brought up Christian in a Christian country who lives near a cathedral, you know, yeah. to be. But if you're in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of the outback of Australia, yeah. you can't really say to that person, you had a chance to come to God and you didn't, because they were too busy looking for food. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> I, I think God is fair, you see. He will, he will give everybody a chance somewhere in there. He, he, you know, he, um, I mean, um, Muslims have had dreams about Jesus. You know. As a result of that, they've started to inquire in the life of Jesus, because Jesus in the Bible is quite different from Jesus in the Quran. Yeah. So when Jesus, uh, Muslims start <laughs> to explore the Jesus of the Bible, uh, they may well find who he really is, uh, the Son yeah. of God, not just a prophet. You know? <laughs> so yeah. but, a lot of Muslims get dreams about Jesus, and that's God's way of getting through to them. Wow. Pretty, uh, it, it's strange that Jesus doesn't in, you know, go into all of their minds. <clears throat> uh, well, they, Muslims can get very hardened to, you know, they, you can get, uh, they get very hardened to anything outside their own understanding. Well, we, we can all be like that. Yeah. yeah. And people are brought up very strongly as Muslims, probably yeah. more strongly than most Christians. It's a very, mm. You're in fear in, in Islam because you've got to try and make sure your life, your good deeds outweigh your bad deeds. Yeah. So it's a constant fear of actually trying to do the right thing, whereas Christianity, uh, we, we do the right thing because we want to, and the crucial thing is not so much what we do, but what we believe. So if yeah. we truly believe that Jesus died for us on the cross and took our yeah. sins, that is the crucial thing, that sees us through. It doesn't yeah. give an excuse to do things that we shouldn't do. Well, I, I mean, I'm not really a believer, but I, I do good things, I hope, because I want to. Yeah. But yeah. where would the difference be? Because, you know, in a, in a sense, you are doing what your God is telling you to do, yeah. and also a fear of God punishing you for not doing those things. So, uh, is it really from yourself, you know, uh, or is it because of these, you know, do it or else yeah. sort of thing? I don't have that fear any longer, see, because once you once you recognise that Jesus died for you, yeah. that, that and, and that you're as long as you keep on believing, that's that's the thing that you, you can go and strike. It's not so much what you do. It's whether you lose your faith in later years, which yeah. people do, unfortunately. Uh, well, yeah, that's what people do. You, you probably never actually came to that crucial decision of whether you put your life in Jesus' hands or not. You might have been brought up as a Christian, mm. but I don't know whether you actually got to that point where you were really sure that you'd done for you on the cross and uh, received his forgiveness and were willing to live the way that you wanted to live, which is pretty tough, especially if you're teenager or something and yes. all the temptations. And yeah. all these well, thank you so much for talking. Okay. I'll let you get on. Okay, you my know. name's John and you're? Uh, Mark. Right, Mark. Uh, what what um, church do you go to? Well, I go to, I've been to different churches over the years. I go to a Pentecostal church at the moment in Wenning Garden City. Oh, okay. So, um, but once you put your life into God's hands, he'll, he'll guide you into what church you go to. So yeah. You'll be sort of looking. Um, uh, I don't know if there's anything else you want. You've picked up the youthful thing. This will, this will tell well, you. I'll take one of those. Yeah. This one. There's, All a bit, right. there's a bit of a Bible if you want to carry a bit of John's what is this? gospel on. Oh, I've got one at home. Okay. I've got the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> nice to speak to you, Mark. Yeah, it's uh, good to speak to yeah, you. Thank you so much. Okay, All right. Bye-bye.